It's summer, 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 summer time! At least in the Northern Hemisphere. And you know what that means? Peoples are gonna be flinging some foam. And if you're new to all this, it can be slightly overwhelming. It's okay, we all gotta start somewhere. And that's what I hope to accomplish in this video. We're gonna cover some of the best and more importantly, accessible pump action magazine fed Springer primaries in the hobby. I'll objectively look at all these blasters, explain some of the terminology you might hear, and more importantly, give you my pros, cons, and overall thoughts of each of these blasters so you can pick out the right one for you. And you're going to like and subscribe, right? Cause these videos don't really do well in the YouTube algorithm, I'd like to do more of them. So please, let me your support, throw your hands in the air, give me your subscribes and likes, and we'll make it through this. So starting out, what is your perfect first blaster? Especially if you wanna do like competitive nerf or semi-competitive nerf or even casual competitive nerf. These are all things, I assure you. Well, that is a pump action, magazine fed Springer primary. These are usually the blasters that are the easiest to get a hold of. They are ubiquitous in pretty much every level and style of play. It is your bread and butter when it comes to flinging foam darts. Springers require generally pretty much no maintenance. Sometimes you gotta lube them, maybe fix parts that break, but that's about it. No batteries, no gas, no nothing, just your own willpower and a little bit of elbow grease. You can be popping foam darts downrange at some frightening velocities. You know, if your games accept that. And let's start with the most obvious. The most important thing to you is, well, what blaster you happen to gravitate towards the most, but second most important is the velocity cap of the game you're playing at. Stock nerf. About 70 FPS. Some other brands like Dart Zone and stuff like that can push up to 100 FPS out of the box, no issues whatsoever. That's our stock range, but there is super stock, and the range for that generally goes up to about 150 FPS. These are blasters that are usually slightly modified, and you will see both super stock and stock blasters in the same ecosystem playing together. Yes, stock blasters generally at a disadvantage, but at lower FPS caps, more things are viable, and it can be a lot of fun. But if you wanna go higher than that, there are plenty of blasters out there that will hit up to 200 FPS out of the box. These are your pro blasters and they hit pretty hard and shoot pretty far. And greater distances, faster velocities can be more fun for some people. Personally, I think one of the better FPS caps in the hobby is about the 200 to 250 mark. This is usually considered the competitive play level. Fewer blasters are viable. There are less modded blasters and more purpose built blasters in the 200 to 250 mark. But there are some wars out there, very few, very special, that will do a 300 to almost infinite FPS. PS cap. Now, something to keep in mind is that every blaster we're going to be talking about shoots one of these. This is a half dart, and it is pretty much the standard ammo of most nerf warring nowadays. They are essentially the same as these kinds of darts, your standard full length nerf darts, but cut in half. And if you don't want to make these yourself, and I wouldn't recommend it, Worker, a company that specializes in hobby level blasters, produces their own darts that are pretty much considered the best in the hobby, and you can find them on various retailers like outofdarts.com. But if you're in a hurry, most Walmarts and Targets, at least in the US, will also carry the Dart Zone Max darts at Target or the Adventure Force Pro darts at Walmart. These darts are the same, slightly different weights, slightly different designs, and they will work pretty good. It is important to note that not every blaster will also shoot full-length darts and half-length darts, and to be fair, Half-length darts is superior to full-length darts in everything but compatibility. If you have an old blaster, use the full-length darts, and that's what you want to use, that's what full-length darts are for. But everything going forward, just rely on half-length darts. You can carry more of them on you. They fly better, they fly farther, they're more active. It's literally better in every single way. Now, dart blaster velocity is measured in feet per second, or FPS, and is measured using a device called a chronograph. A chronograph is a thing that uses two sets of infrared lasers. It measures when the dart enters and exits one set and enters and exits the second set, and uses mathematics to give you an idea of how fast that projectile is traveling. These are foam darts. They travel pretty fast coming out of the barrel of a blaster, but they do have a problem with wind resistance. They're pretty large and they're pretty light. They will succumb to air resistance. They will lose their velocity. And they, I mean, hitting 200 feet with a foam dart isn't unheard of by any means, but there is diminishing return. That's why something past like 250 FPS, it doesn't even really seem like there's much different going on. The difference between 150 FPS and 250 FPS is massive. The difference between 250 FPS and 350 FPS is pretty minimal. 
Also, there's these. There's a lot of different kinds of these, but these are known as scar muzzles or barrels. These devices have literal rifling on them, and what they basically do is at the end of your barrel, when the foam dart hits these things, the ridges or strings or even bearings, known as B cars, grab the foam dart and give it a twist. And if you know anything about projectiles, that means that it's going to be much more stable in flight. Now, to be fair, typical engagement ranges for Nerf are usually around 100 to 125 feet at pro level. And as that FPS goes up, you try to hit those greater ranges, these are pretty much mandatory, and there's no one-size-fits-all solution for these ever. You pretty much have different ones of these for some different blasters and, more importantly, some different FPS caps. Most games and clubs run anywhere from 150 to 200 FPS, so having a 150 FPS blaster and a 250 FPS blaster, or more importantly, a blaster that can jump between multiple different FPS caps, is always a good thing. Let's also talk about magazines. Now, each one of these blasters will come with its own magazine, and those magazines can be compatible with other blasters, and sometimes it isn't. But there's one type of magazine that pretty much works in all of them, but like one option, and that is the Worker Talon Mag. Buy these off Amazon, buy these from Out of Darts, buy these from a bunch of different shops, and they hold around 15 to 18 darts. It kind of depends on how much you want to smash in here. Standard magazine, pretty lovely. Worker also makes a curved Talon magazine, which holds 18 to 20 darts and is also pretty good. The Outer Arts Tachi Mag is what you wanted to use if you literally want a melee weapon that doubles as a magazine. These things are long, but they also hold upwards of 30 darts. And there is an option for kind of a specialty equipment out of there with the Nerf Easy E or Create with Ezekiel Mythical Drum Magazine, which will hold upwards of 50 darts. Speaking of summer, if you're anything like me, when the temperature increases, you spend a lot of time every night chasing the cold side of a pillow that never seems to be there. But this video's sponsor, Marlow, fixes that with the pillow. Now, I assume you know what a pillow is, but what makes Marlowe's The Pillow different? Two very important things. One, the pillow is infused with a cooling foam and also a mesh that helps improve airflow to keep that sucker comfortable all night. And I can attest to that because this is my personal Marlowe pillow that I've been using for about a month now. And two, perhaps more importantly, the fact is you can customize your Marlowe pillow. Do you want it a little bit fluffier or do you want it a little bit more firm? Don't worry about adding or subtracting anything. All you have to do is zip your Marlow pillow and it will become bigger and fluffier. And if you want even more bigger and fluffier, you can unzip the other side and achieve maximum pillow fluffiness. And if it's too fluffy for you, just zip it back up. Not only is Marlow doing a 30% off summer sale that ends July 5th, but you can save an extra 20% by using my code down in the description below. And if you're on the fence at all, they offer a 365 day money back guarantee. So don't delay and check out the cooler side of sleep today. Now, of course, every blaster that I'm going to talk about today is pretty much functionally the same. They all work the same way. They all have very similar features and they do have some stark differences, but we'll explain those similarities with our first choice, the OG Nexus Pro from Adventure Force, or in this case, Dart Zone, because Dart Zone made this blaster for the Adventure Force line at Walmart. And this is the blaster that put high performance foam flinging on the map for pretty much everybody. Us that live terminally online, we're buying parts from weird sketchy stores online or overseas and building our own. But this was one that cost a fraction of what all that cost and performed about the same, if not better. All the bosses we're gonna talk about are gonna have Picatinny style rails at the top, which is a real steel standard that will also work with most airsoft accessories and stuff like that, which means you can put like scopes, optics, and cameras and lights and all sorts of stuff on them. They're all gonna feature pump action because that's just the most efficient way to prime the blaster and fling a foam dart down range. It's not the best if you like other things like lever action, like a true connoisseur as myself, but they're pump action. They'll have probably a stock of some description and they'll have a magazine well. Sometimes they'll have a big gaping hole, which you have to put an adapter into in order to make it work with short darts. And yeah, they all basically function like this one. So what makes the Nexus Pro the best? Well, it's, it's not, but it was the best for quite some period of time. And for a lot of people, this was your favorite and this was the one that got you into what you're doing today with foam flinging. The Nexus Pro is cheap. Right now you can get them in a variety of colors for around $40 and you can find them on sale and even use secondhand for much cheaper than that. It is a Walmart exclusive because Adventure Force is the Walmart brand, but this baby was made by Dart Zone, a name that will come up quite often. And there is another blaster that I'm not going to show here except for right now called the Max Striker in the Dart Zone Max line, which is exclusive to Target. Same blaster concept, slightly tuned better, different accessories, overall a better blaster, 
but it's the same. You got an adjustable stock back here, which you can completely remove to reveal a buffer tube. Your spring is stored in here and you could actually like just undo a single screw. And once you do, you can just twist that off and pull out a spring, which is super cool. Cause one of the ways you can tune your blasters up or down is by swapping out the spring. Also swapping out the barrel for a longer, shorter, tighter, looser one will affect your performance as well. So if you wanna do 100 FPS and play with your stock friends, this is a blaster that can do that. If you wanna play all the way up to 200, maybe even 250, it might even go higher than that. It will also pretty much do that. So why is it the Nexus Pro the best? Well, because it's first of all got this disgusting slop right there, which it has in the design because it's meant to also shoot full length darts. And it's not exactly a smooth prime. It's crunchy, it doesn't feel the best. And, even though it was the first and it technically works fine. If you don't care about any of that, the Nexus Pro will do you really good. Yeah, you won't have any complaints. It's also not even the cheapest option anymore, but it is one of the original and it's in a form factor that a lot of people love. And it looks pretty cool. My main gripe with this thing was the two tiered uh, Picatinny rail. I, I don't know why they did that and I hated it. I wish they would have never done that. There's even quite a few to custom aftermarket parts replacing internals with metal. You can replace grips with 3D printed ones. Of course, you can change out the stock for whatever you want. There's a lot to love with this thing. However, you cannot out of the box easily put on a scar muzzle with this blaster, which is a shame because after about 150, 200 FPS, you're going to want to put a scar muzzle on it. And this one, you have to pretty much swap out the barrel and do some minor tweaking in order to get one to function on this. And it does not come with anything that stabilizes the dart in flight. That's gonna be a common theme with pretty much all of these as well. There is an option here that's less expensive than the Nexus Pro and might be better in every single possible way except for durability, and that is the new for 2023 X-Shot Pro Series Long Shot Blaster. This is a bullpup, and it is the only bullpup on this list, and that just means that the magazine and everything is located behind the grip. It's a cool thing, but some people just don't like that because it's kind of awkward to reload. So they opt for the traditional rifle standard. And the Long Shot is a little bit weaker than the Nexus Pro out of the box, hitting about 140 FPS. It does feature some minor rifling in the muzzle, which kind of doesn't work at all because it barely touches the dart but it does come with another picatinny rail iron sights which are practically useless compatibility with both full length and half length darts which some people appreciate a pretty smooth prime it is ratcheted so uh, some people will hate that but you can disable that if you want and i say that because this is one of the easiest blasters to mod ever you literally just take out these two front screws remove the plastic pins that were holding the blaster together and you can pull off the whole front muzzle. Then you just reach in here with a screwdriver. There's one more screw that you can access through this slit, remove that screw and then you can pull out everything and drop it a new spring, new barrel and get this thing to shoot up to like 300 FPS. Overall, this is probably the highest recommended blaster on this list because for $30, you could do a heck of a lot. And if it breaks, which is the problem, you can just go out and buy another one if you want or return this one. And they had that breaking. I've seen a lot of pictures now of the plunger tubes on these things breaking, probably because they have a hardened steel spring inside of them and they're really thin, brittle plastic. Yeah, so if your X-Shot long shot broke in that way, you're not alone. However, it's still so cheap. It still looks so freaking cool and it works so amazingly well. It's kind of hard to hate it, even if it currently does have a durability issue. And honestly, right there, that's pretty much where this video could end. I mean, it's a bullpup, and you might not like bullpups, but for 30 bucks, for the ability to drop in maybe another $20 in parts and get up to like 250 FPS is absolutely mind-blowing. That is a game changer in every sense of the word. And I should probably mention it has slam fire, and slam fire is when you can hold down the trigger, when you prime the blaster back, and then prime it forward, it automatically fires the dart, meaning you can increase your... Gotta hate those sights. Which means you can increase your rate of fire. It has features that most other blasters in this list don't have. But one blaster that does feature slam fire is the Game Face Tryon, a blaster that I am kind of smitten with. This thing just fits me like a glove and I really do like it and I think it's one of the better blasters out there. It's just runs about $80. You can sometimes find it for cheaper though. I think I just saw it on like Walmart for like $67. Same thing, pump action, magazine fed, primary springer. It has a lot of customization options and that can be fun if you don't want your Game Face Tryon to look like every other Game Face Tryon out there. For example, do you hate this thumb hole stock? Well, you can completely remove it. You can adjust the stock in a variety of different ways or completely remove this piece. And behind that, you've got 
Yes, a little thing that you can twist and remove not only the power spring, so you can adjust it up and down as well, but it also has spacers, which has more pre-compression, which increases the force of the spring. So you can simply remove these to get less power or add them to get more power or swap out the spring entirely and add these to do all sorts of different combinations. It doesn't require any tools to do that. And you can just simply remove this green plastic piece, which will remove your grip and the stock to expose a standard M4 buffer tube that you can add whatever stock you want onto it. And it's compatible with a variety of already existing grips. Like every single option, but one, you can simply remove this priming grip to expose a Picatinny rail that you could put whatever foregrip you want on it. And the Tryon features slam fire. Pull the trigger down, it fires as soon as I return the slide forward. That trigger is one of the nicest you can get in the entirety of a hobby. It is short, crisp, and beautiful. And the overall, Everything on this is super comfortable. This is one of my best recommendations. If you want something that is slightly nicer and you don't worry about going too far above 200 FPS, this is probably the blaster for you. In fact, I'm gonna say this is probably the blaster for most people out there. The Tryon is simply put way too freaking good. Yeah, Tryon, super awesome. Can't use full length darts, but you shouldn't care. We covered X-Shot, we covered Game Face, and now we're gonna cover Dart Zone with the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.2. Same features as everything else we've talked about and uh, does use full length and half length darts, but they kind of fix that disgusting slop, which I'm super happy about. It does feature a standard end strike buttstock attachment point, so it'll work with all your nerf stocks. And of course, then you could put on their existing folding stock, which isn't here because they break. Folding stock does have a buffer tube on the end of it, but uh, yeah, they, they just break. They're very flimsy and it doesn't work good. That's what this little thing right here for it's a catch to put this like on that like that um which means even if you're not using the stock that it comes with that you can easily remove uh you'll still have this here very not well designed in my opinion but it does come with a lot of picatinny options like the ones on the side that you can easily remove the long flat rail on the top there's another one if you want to change out the foregrip and the ergonomics on it are actually pretty freaking good with the exception of the stock that breaks that's not the only thing that breaks these things have a notorious problem of jamming and breaking internally and that makes it a really hard recommendation, especially at the price point, which is like 100 to 130 dollars. It's just too much for what this thing is. It is cool that you can pull this pin out right here, undo these screws, and break the entire blaster apart and get to every single piece inside. It's not cool that you need a screwdriver to remove this stock cap right here, which will allow you to then effortlessly change out the spring. So, yeah, not very good, but don't worry, Dart Zone gets better. Like the ever lovable and freakishly huge Dart Zone Pro Mark for a brand new blaster for 2023. And this one is kind of a home run because it does a lot of really good things. Starting with the most obvious, the stupid long prime. This is the longest prime of any blaster we have right here. And that means it's got a lot of plunger volume, which means it generates a lot of airflow, which also means that like, even with the lightest possible spring, you're gonna be hitting pretty hard even though the Prime will be absurdly light and smooth. It has customization options where you can, you know, remove the front barrel and then you can remove this uh, thing right here and take out its included scar muzzle. A really nice feature which goes in the front right here and will stabilize your darts in flight, making it more accurate. But you cannot use the barrel extension, which increases your barrel length and thus your performance and the scar muzzle at the same time without modification. Dumb. The stock is removable, but there's no other stock that will really work with this thing, so it's kind of pointless until more people... The grip is extremely comfortable, the foregrip is extremely comfortable and customizable. Super long Picatinny rail up here, and overall, for most people, this is going to be a great blaster. It's just also freakishly huge and long, so smaller people will not do well with it at all whatsoever it's not a bad blaster at all because this thing is a freaking monster it's built like a tank and it is super nice and fun to use but it's also kind of a clone of a worker swift with a lot of the things upgraded so if you already bought a worker swift and already had parts for it uh, there's not much of a point to buying one of these things because it can use a lot of the same parts and you can find the worker swift on deep discount pretty much everywhere because it's kind of old at this point and worker has already surpassed this one there are people that love the worker swift such as myself this thing also features a disgustingly long prime which means smooth as butter and yes you can customize pretty much everything you want on this using the allen key that stores in the grip right here you can extend out the stock you can access a plug you undo that plug the spring and everything will come out you can 
remove these three screws right here and you could pull apart the entire blaster to access everything. And if you wanna swap out the barrel, you just loosen this key right here and you could pull the barrel out and all these different barrels and spring combinations give you a wide variety of performance points. Plus it looks really freaking cool. So what's the downside? Well, for one, without aftermarket parts, you cannot swap out the priming grip, which is a shame. A lot of people don't like the horizontal priming grips. They like the vertical ones or the angled ones, such as myself, but it will do all of that. And it has a bunch of aftermarket parts, triggers, all sorts of cool things, which means it's a pretty good recommendation, especially if you find it on a deal. It can hit really hard for pretty much barely effort whatsoever, and a lot of people love it, but it doesn't have the customization externally, and more importantly, like, you know, you can't swap out this grip at all, which means a lot of people have problems with it, because a lot of people really like to swap out their grips for something that they find more comfortable. For about $150 to $180, you can't go wrong, but as I said, Worker has already supplanted that. It's not a direct upgrade, it's more of a side grade, but it's like the best side grade. We're gonna talk about one of the best blasters on this list. Maybe not for price, but for everything else, this is your baby, the Worker Harrier. This is another game-changing blaster that is so hard not to love. Again, you can't really swap out the grip with anything because it's part of the whole system, but you've got a buffer tube style stock. You pull this off, put whatever stock you want, and it comes with this one, which is pretty cool. And underneath of that is an Allen key, which will allow you to undo pretty much every single screw on the blaster. Picatinny rail for putting on whatever pump grip you want. It's got a Picatinny rail option underneath this for a bipod. A long boy Picatinny rail right here that is made of aluminum is really nice. Side mounted Picatinny rails, stupidly long barrel options that this time are actually threaded. So you can change out the barrel without doing any modification to the blaster whatsoever. And if you want to change out every single thing on the blaster, including the spring, you simply undo these two screws right here and these two screws right here. If you're even using this because it's an optional part, you don't have to have if you're not using any kind of sights. It's got like a built-in iron sight that sucks, but it does have it. You can pull apart the entire blaster. And because it has this rail and this design, it is the most solid of any blaster here by far. It feels amazing. It feels like the highest quality possible thing you could have. And you could make it hit pretty much every single performance mark you want. It will not hit as hard as the Dart Zone Pro Mark IV or the Worker Swift because both those blasters are capable of hitting upwards of 400 FPS. This can hit still pretty hard. 350 FPS isn't even out of the question for this thing. And anything from 130 to 300 is pretty easy to hit with just Worker's own parts, let alone other people's custom stuff. It even has a reasonably nice prime with automatic return which is a huge bonus for some people. It's the jack of all trades. A lot of people are gonna like it, but not being able to customize the grip and the fact that the stock bag release can't be easily manipulated with a single finger. I mean, not only do you have this grip guard here, which you can remove, and removing all these metal pieces on the outside that you're not using will decrease the weight, which is super nice. But yeah, it's all the way up here. So pretty much two-handed reloads only. But it's an absolute beast of the blaster. This isn't like your first one, unless you just have money to burn. It's just a super great graduation. If you want some something that feels nice and has all that customization. If you just want something that's super solid and has all these options for performance and looks like this, you can really do with a worker hair. It right now is pretty much the pinnacle of foam flinging. And there's gonna be a lot of fans for this thing down in the comment section below. It is one of the best. But if you truly want the best and a lot of options, but not all of them, you're gonna have to jack that price tag way up because we do have one more option. That is, I will never recommend it to pretty much anybody. But if you just have money to burn and you want something that will fit this exact specification, this thing is pretty much unbreakable. And this is the Sabre M20. It is a completely aluminum, steel, and Delrin beast of a blaster. Thanks to its roller bearing design, it has the lightest prime of pretty much any blaster here. And that prime is hitting about 300 FPS. And yes, also short and compact. The barrels can be easily removed and swapped out for other ones. And you can buy upgrade parts to easily swap out the spring. Although without those upgrade parts, it's in doing like seven different sizes of screws and is absolutely horrible. It doesn't even come with a rear grip or a front grip though. You have to source those yourself. Of course, Picatinny rail for the front grip means you can use pretty much anything, but the rear grip is a Airsoft AEG grip. And you'll probably have to Dremel it out and cut it up in order to get it to fit on your blaster like I did with this one, which I absolutely love, which is why people like being able to swap out those grips for whatever they want. 
This specific grip is the most comfortable one I have by far on any blaster. There are videos of people jumping on this thing. You can throw it out the window and it will probably survive. It is also super heavy. It is the heaviest blaster here by far. It is heavier than most firearms because it's just built like a tank. And yet it's also not the largest blaster ever. It is just insane. It is super buttery, nice, good in practically every single way but it starts at $650. And with things, minor upgrades like aluminum mag release, aluminum trigger, getting the plate that will easily allow you to swap out springs will cost you hundreds of dollars more. It's a good idea. It's a pretty good product. I'll never recommend you buy one, but if you absolutely have the money and want the best and you want to be able to tune this thing up and down to hit pretty much whatever performance mark you want with practically no effort whatsoever on your end, just a lot of money, the Saber M20 is probably your best bet, but I assume that's gonna only respond to about three of you people out there. So at the end of the day, what are the blasters that I recommend? Well, if you're just getting into this, like it's your first blaster whatsoever, you can't go wrong with the cheapest option. At $30 US, you can't really beat the long shot. It's a super lightweight, super good blaster that has some minor durability problems, so your mileage may vary, but it's so easy to mod and you could make it do pretty much anything for such a low price. It's, you, you, I can't really not recommend it enough. The long shot is probably the best blaster for those of you jumping in. It's also gonna hit higher performance marks than something like the Game Face Tryon, but if you only need to hit about 100 to 200 FPS because that's what your local games are at, the Tryon might be the best for that option. It's a bit more expensive, but it is nicer in every single possible way. It's still a harder recommendation than the long shot because they both have similar feature sets, but if you absolutely hate the bullpup stuff and you want something that's a bit nicer, I'm gonna recommend the Tryon full stop. And and of course, if you're one and done, you want one blaster that'll pretty much do everything, you've got the Worker Harrier. Seriously, this blaster is built so much better than any other blaster here with the exception of the Saber M20 that I can't really not recommend it enough if, if you have the money for it. I mean, you will be spending more money on getting aftermarket barrels and springs and any other addition you may want. But out of the box, you get so much value for your money and this thing is just so nice and pretty much the middle of the road perfect for every single thing you could possibly need in foam flinging. Yeah, the Harrier, it's the more expensive option here at around 180 to $200, but I cannot recommend it enough if you're willing to spend that kind of money on flinging a foam dart. But that doesn't mean any of the other options here were absolutely awful. In fact, if you wanna just go through the route that we used to go through back in the day you could buy a nerf retaliator and buy upgrade parts and build it yourself it does allow you to get a more bespoke custom made experience but you're far better off putting your money into one of the blasters that i've demonstrated here today now again this is just accessible pump action magazine fed springers if you want bolt action well there's options for that lever action uh, there should be more options for that. Flywheelers? Yeah, we're getting more of them, especially in things that you can just buy online, take out a box, plug a battery in, and it works. 2023 has been one of the best years for foam flinging ever, and we're only halfway through it. And I really hope the future shines even brighter. All right, I got some pretty shocking news. We all did while I was editing this video, and I have to do something. It's going to dominate the conversation down below even if I don't do this part, so whatever. But of course, if I make a standalone video, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense and not a whole lot of people are gonna watch it. And if I make a YouTube community post, nobody's gonna see it. But one of my favorite memories of all time was when I went to Jared's Blaster Battle last summer and we went to this place called Electric Shuffle. It's like a shuffle board, you know, you got the puck with your hand and you try to get in in a certain zone and stuff like that and get points and work with a team. But it uses like a computer and cameras and stuff to track everything. It was so much fun. And I got to share that fun with Coop. We got to sit next to each other, drinking, talking smack, and, you know, sliding pie. It was so cool. It's one of my favorite memories of all time. And it saddens me that I'll probably never get a chance to do that because Coop772 has decided to stop making Nerf content and move on to bigger and better things. He's essentially put his channel in archive mode where you apparently can't even comment or anything on it anymore. And he cites burnout. He wants to do other things and he's not passionate about foam flinging anymore. And I can sympathize that as a content creator when you need to get a video done and you want to get a video done, but the video just isn't happening. So you put it off, but you have to get it done and it just kind of compounds on itself and it leads to burnout and it stops feeling good. And if you don't feel good, it's hard to get in front of a camera and do stuff. And I can't imagine what it's like for one of the biggest content creators in the hobby. I mean, this guy's channel was getting millions of views a month, more than anybody else. And he still stepped away 
for the betterment of his health. And he left a hole that will never be filled. The everything's a jolt reskin, the deploy, the flywheel master race, the unicorns, the tacticals, and of course the 69 giggities over the chronograph. That's all because of Coop. It's all memes and references that every single person in this hobby knows of. And even if you don't like this person, you can't mistake the amount of good, positive things they have done for all of us. And the least I can do is give you this short little send off coop, even though I know you'll probably never see it. But hey, thanks for sitting next to me, having a beer, playing some shuffleboard and having some good competitive trash talk in there. It's legitimately one of my favorite memories. And I'm super glad that that memory includes you so vividly in it. Thank you, Coop772, and I wish you everything of the best of luck in whatever you plan on going into going forward.